Hi, good evening. Thank you for taking some time out to listen to my discussion about software NAS with OpenStack. My name is Suki Baines, and I work for Magenetics. And before I really talk about what our solution is for OpenStack, a quick few words about our company. We are a relatively small company. We're based out of uh, Mountain View. We're about 45 strong today. And what we've built is a software-defined storage solution that can sit on OpenStack as well as other infrastructures. And the reason we built this is because there's a perceived issues with current enterprise storage solutions around scalability, security, and the complexity, and more importantly, the cost of what it takes to actually provision file services to a distributed or even to a large scale infrastructure. So given those kind of issues at hand, what's our solution for that? So our solution is actually called the Imaginatics Cloud Storage Platform. As the name suggests, it's been designed from the ground up for use with cloud, whether it's public cloud, private cloud, or even a hybrid of those. But it is designed from the ground up to be used with cloud. As I said, we are a software-defined storage platform, so we don't actually store any data ourselves. So we do look to an object store as a target repository for storing data. So in the context of OpenStack, that's going to be Swift and possibly even Ceph. So given these two solutions together enables us to provide file services to what we see as two very good use cases. So the first one is we call Elastic NAS. So if you look at this as being an in-cloud file system, so if you have VM applications running and you want to provision some temporary or even permanent storage to those applications, we can allow you to do that because we're a software-defined solution. So you can actually spin us up as a virtual filer, and you can present services to your applications. It can consume those services. And if you want to then end those services because maybe you are doing some kind of service like a rendering as a service where you want to spin up some virtual resources, do some processing, and then blow everything away, you can do that. You can't do that with a physical server. So we'll allow you to spin up as many virtual filers as you want. Another use case that we see quite often is NAS consolidation. Uh, a lot of our customers have a very widely distributed NAS infrastructure. They have so many filers. You know, it's not just about server sprawl. It's also filer sprawl now. How do I manage these hundreds and thousands of small NAS filers? So there's a desire to try and collapse that onto a smaller footprint. Now, one thing that we're able to do is to actually use an object store and present data to an endpoint user and still maintain an acceptable level of service so the end user experience is like they're using data locally. So how do we do this? We have a totally different architecture. We're not a monolithic storage platform that you see today, that you see commonplace with like CMC and NetApp. We don't have that architecture. We've actually adopted a distributed architecture where we have three core components. We have our Meshinetics virtual filer, which sits in VM space. We also have some endpoint agents to do some heavy lifting at the place where data is ingested and used. And finally, there's an object store. Now, we don't provide that. We look to our customers to provide that. So the endpoint agent, like I said, does a lot of the heavy lifting in how we process your data. So if you look at when you're ingesting data, when you're writing stuff out, we will do in-stream chunking and hashing. That hashing is used to deliver functions like dedupe, We'll also do encryption and compression. So all that is being done at the edge, not at the core. Again, with a monolithic storage solution, you don't have enough horsepower to do that. We want to use all the CPU, the memory that's available at the edge to do all that processing for you. On the read side, you're going to benefit tremendously from all the read caching we do, the caching of the directory. So the idea is the end user experience of using our solution is that they're using local storage even though the data could be actually living a long distance away in some kind of an object store. So our virtual filer does the core storage function. So it's a, at the heart of what we have, it's a distributed file system. And we provide metadata services. And one of the things that we do in our solution, we split the metadata and the data flows. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, we also do global lock management. So we have a great solution for collaboration. If you want to share data across the globe, we'll allow you to do that and yet maintain consistency all the way through. So we have a very strong consistency model with what we do. 
On top of that, we'll use your existing security infrastructure to do things like authentication and ensure that the user has rights to uh, access a file that they're trying to get hold of. And then we run some other services like web clients and proxy services within that core function for the virtual filer. And on top of that, as you'd expect, you want to have things like snapshots and disaster recovery as core data management functions within that virtual filer. And the last piece of the solution is the object store, which again is customer provided. But if you don't know about object store, but basically object storage is the next wave of storage. It provides things like scalability at up to the petabyte scale and beyond. It's self-healing. It's got built-in replication policies. It allows you to reduce the cost of deploying storage and also reduces the effort that's required to actually manage storage. And it's very easy to configure multiple levels of nines of availability with an object store. So how does all this work in practice? Like I said, we do actually split out the metadata and the data piece itself. So once we deploy our endpoint agent on your endpoint devices, now the endpoint device could be a tablet, it could be an iPhone, it could be a laptop workstation or a server. We don't really care. It's all an endpoint device that's going to consume some form of file services. Now, the metadata is actually stored on our virtual filer that sits in VM space. So that's where all the encryption keys are held. And we've got a very strong security model. We make sure the encryption keys don't really coexist in the object store. We keep the two separate. So the data plane is really where the client starts to do IO to the object store to get the data they want. So how does it work in practice? So let's take a, a sequence of events that would happen. So a client is going to request a read or a write. Every single time a file is requested, we will always go and talk to our virtual filer. The virtual filer will first of all do the authentication of the user, make sure they have rights to access that file, and then hand off signed URLs so they can go away and actually find where that object is within the cloud. Because the agent doesn't really know where its data is stored. All that is actually stored within the virtual filer. So once we hand off the signed URLs to the MagFS agent, that will then go into session with the object store. So we're essentially out of the data path. As soon as the, uh, the agent has those keys and the signed URLs, he's able to go away and collect the chunks from the object store and reconstitute that file and start using it. Now, we actually gave the agent a 15-minute lease on that file, so he's free to go away and do I.O. against that object at will for the next 15 minutes. After that, it expires. Now, the reason we've done this is that we believe, again, in security. If an endpoint device is lost, within 15 minutes, no one can get access to the data because your keys have expired. So again, if you think about the edge usage case scenario with laptops, iPhones, and the rest of it, we can make sure that your, your data is secure. So that's what it does. How do you deploy it? So this all sits, as I said, in VM space. So a typical deployment scenario is you're going to have uh, a single hypervisor hosting some of our modules. We don't, depending on what you want to deploy, we will spin up separate VMs to provide that function. And again, it's not always convenient to have a, a failure domain like this. So you may want to have a second hypervisor where you can actually design and build out uh, HA and DR type solutions as well. So this actually runs on Amazon EC2, VMware, and we're going to very soon have support for OpenStack Nova as well. We've got ESX running on Nova in the labs. We have some work to do in KVM, but we soon expect to have that available as, as a platform that we can actually run our virtual filer on. So it always exists within a, a VM infrastructure. So what's the use case for, for OpenStack? So if some of you are playing with OpenStack today, you probably already are using object storage with Swift. By default, if it's, enabled, if it's enabled, OpenStack will try and use it as the repository for Glance. So how can we change this? And why do we want to change this and bring benefit to you? Well, what we say is, well, let's slip in our virtual filer. Now, the controller, which actually is hosting Glance, is still doing native REST communication to the object store through our agent. However, what we have done now is we've actually presented an NFS mount point to Glance. So Glance is no longer using Swift. Glance thinks it's using an NFS mount. And as soon as you have an NFS mount, we can start to share that with other resources. So you may have some other OpenStack installations that have their own Glance image. 
or their own Glance instance. So we could actually have a common repository for all of your Glance instances. And that common repository is going to be deduped. So we can make sure you're efficiently using your storage resources by deduping all of your Glance images. But as it's an NFS mount, you can also mount it to a Linux server. In fact, we're actually a distributed file system, and we can actually even mount that to a Windows server. So you can start to share that data. Now, again, using the basic Swift object store is difficult for you to get visibility of what's in there. And the only way you can do that is with Glance. We're giving you the ability to use legacy access methods, the methods that you're used to to access your data across different, different platforms. So once you're doing this, using Swift as a backend repository for your data, why not look at how you can use that to deploy file services in other parts of your infrastructure? Home directories for end users. Uh, talked about the in-cloud file system. So if you're going to have temporary workloads that you need to provision temporary storage services to, we can do that as well. Active Archive is another great use case for us and also backup as well. Now, again, we are about giving choice. So we're going to give you the ability to have data presented in SIFs and NFS-like access methods across a multitude of different endpoints, tablets, servers, all of it is really is one file system which you can present everywhere. And on that theme of choices, we also want to give you the choice of looking at other object stores. So we actually support a whole range of object stores, both public, private, uh, commercial, not, or even the, 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 the free ones as well. So you've got the choice to decide how you want to deploy your file services. We're, essentially, we're an abstraction layer that sit, uh, sits on top of your object store and allows you to then provision up SIFs and NFS. So this may look like a busy and complicated slide. But one thing I will say, why not try to see how this could work for you? Have a free demo and a free trial of our software. See how you can make it work for your own OpenStack installation, serve up services to, to Glance, and then see how you can grow that within your, in, in, in your environment for other applications. So normally, I would actually ask you any questions. This is not the best platform for asking questions. So what I'd urge is come across to our stand, enjoy a beer, ask all the questions you want to ask, and we can uh, give you a bit more detail about how we can allow you to use OpenStack Swift as a, a platform providing for providing NFS and SIFS file services within your infrastructure at a very low cost point. Thank you very much.